Good morning. Good to see all those that came out to worship this morning. Let's be standing and singing, Revive Us Again. crowd you are. Awesome. We have reasons to be, right? Many reasons to be. Well, I had this marked, and I don't know what I did. First of all, by turning it upside down when I got here. <laughs> um, so I'm looking this morning at um, uh, the end of uh, Ephesians chapter 6, spiritual warfare, okay, is... Um, as Paul's winding this up, as he discussed, uh, um, so as he starts it out in verse 10 here, he, he says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. And the, finally, he's speaking of everything that he talked to about prior to this, about how uh, our walk uh, as Christ, our walk as Christians, uh, how we're to be different from unbelievers, uh, how we walk as children of light, um, and we're, how we're to walk in love. And also with instructions to the husband and the wife and the children and the father. Uh, so he says, um, starting out in verse 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having gilded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you have been able to quench all the fiery darts from the wicked one. And take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to the end with perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And one more thing quickly on this. Uh, so Paul gives us a far more positive, constructive strategy for standing firm against our spiritual enemies. And this is we're to do every day. Put on the whole armor of God. And that armor is made up entirely of spiritual weapons, such as truth, righteousness, the gospel of peace, faith, salvation, the word of God, and prayer. By learning to wear and wield these powerful armaments, we can resist and carefully lay plans of the devil, and when the fight is over, still be standing. Do we have any unspoken prayers today? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. 
Heavenly Father God, we, we thank you so much, Father. We thank you, Father, for, for your love, for your grace, for your mercy, Father, for your presence here this morning, Father. Father, we come here to worship you, to praise you today, Father. Thank you so much for all that you do for us, all the little things we take for granted. God, help us just to, to Father, just everything we think, say, and do this day to your glory, Father, to, to put you first in everything, God. Father, we're a needy people, Father. Without you, we can do nothing. You said you'd never leave us nor forsake us, and we stand firm on that, and we thank you, God. Father, we lift up you, the Ukrainian, Ukrainian people, Father, the Russian people. Father, just be with them, Father. Thank you, Father, for your protection of, of our homes, our workplaces, that hedge protection. Father, for those that are sick and suffering today, Father, going through grief and whatever might be going on in our lives. You said that there will be suffering, Father, and, and help us to uh, allow that to draw us closer to you, Father, because more than anything, that is what we need to do, Father, is grow closer to you, to get to know you, Father, as our Lord and Savior, Father, and we, we thank you in that precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Victor Baptist Church. Why don't you give God some glory? Amen. Uh, give Amen. You can be seated. It's so good to be in the Lord's house to, this morning. How many of y'all are feeling that hour yet? Uh, I don't know. How, how many of y'all showed up for Sunday school but didn't know we were at church at this point? Amen. Uh, but amen. We were a little ahead, but that's all right. Uh, I wanted to continue to lift up our community in prayer. Uh, we're looking at having a big tent revival on March 27th, and that's going to be Oak Grove. Uh, my prayer is that there will be people driving by, and they don't even know about it, but they're going to see it. And something's going something's to tell them to turn around and go experience the Lord. Uh, so keep that in your prayers. And uh, as I said last week, uh, this 27th marks the 40, we have 40 weeks left of this year. Amen. And so we're, we're kind of uh, asking those who feel led, if you would just uh, come alongside us and take one day, uh, the, each of those 40 weeks, take one of those days and just pray and fast for our community, our, our nation, because Lord knows we need more prayer. Amen. We, we need a lot of prayer because uh, we, we have, like, like you see those little children right there, that, those, those are our future. Amen. And we want to give them a bright and beautiful future. Uh, part of that is, is praying and seeking the Lord. Uh, so please, if you would, uh, participate in that. Uh, also, I uh, want to uh, continue to remind you guys that we are doing small group training uh, Monday nights from 7 to 8. If you'd like to open up your home for a Bible study, or if you might be interested in teaching a Bible study, man, we'd love to have you. Uh, please be aware of that. And uh, also, uh, our little girls group on Wednesday nights, they're going to be uh, raising some uh, proceeds for their GA's ministries. And so I, I have good news as we're going through the Gospel of Matthew, before we even get started, you're going to be able to get some snacks. Amen. And I know you, ba you Baptists love snacks. Amen. Uh, yeah, that's right. And uh, amen. See, there we go. Uh, so please be aware of that. I wanted y'all um, to be aware and help that ministry. And uh, one, one more thing. I want to read a card to the church. It says, uh, Dear Victor Baptist Church family, we'd like to thank you for all of your love, support, kindness, prayers, encouragement and welcoming atmosphere as we grow in our faith. We appreciate the continuous generosity. We have felt at home since you've walked through those front doors. Uh, thank you for all uh, being a huge part of our lives. Love uh, the Bryant family. And Matthew and Melissa, we love you guys. Uh, I love you very much. And some of you might not know, but Matt is a Change Lives Ministries graduate. And, um, and uh, hope, hope is real, man. Um, <laughs> you guys. Uh, you just don't know how far our love can take somebody. Amen. Uh, I, I did want to mention, too, uh, are the, the Hannah House Ministries is with us here this morning. Hey, ladies, how y'all doing? Man? It's good to see y'all. Uh, very, very awesome. And, and be in prayer, uh, our own, very own Miss Barbara Skelton, I don't know if y'all know that, she's managing the house right now. So y'all continue to lift up Barbara Skelton in prayer as she's doing that. And the ministry has called two more staff members, and that's Pam and Ashley. And so if y'all would just keep them in your prayers and lift them up, uh, is that is an extremely important ministry. And if you know somebody, because I, I guarantee you all of us know somebody who struggles with substance abuse issues, you know, man, please just give us an opportunity to uh, love somebody to Jesus 
Because I don't call this a rehab house. I call it a reconciliation house. Reconciling men back to God and women back to God. Uh, so keep uh, those ministers in your prayer. But if I could, could I get all the children to come down for the children's sermon at this time? Good morning, children. How y'all doing there? Pretty good. Uh, y'all feeling all right? Mostly. How many of y'all drink coffee yet? Man, oh man. Uh, wow. <clears throat> y'all are start, starting early, I see. That's very, you've already had your morning coffee. Amen. Uh, I mean, why do, why, do you, why do people even drink that stuff? I mean, is, uh, isn't it, I mean, if you've tried it, it's nasty. I mean, is it nasty? You don't think it's nasty? Oh, oh, Starbucks mocha coffee, you know, that, like, uh, that's just like, amen. You know, well, uh, let's, they, they kind of doctor, th- doctor that up, you know, a little bit, right? I mean, because if you've ever had coffee when it was just coffee, it, I mean, have you ever tasted it? it it's, it's it, you, you have? What's it taste like? Oh, you haven't, you know? Oh, yes, ma'am. It tastes disgusting. Nasty. And I love it. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I used to never drink coffee. I, I, I did not drink coffee till I turned 23 years old. And I, I'd be, been in ministry for a little bit. And it's the first time I ever tried it. And it, it, it did something to me, you know. I like, I cleaned my whole office. <laughs> and then went home and I did things there. And then, uh, you know, but after I've been drinking it for a lot of years, it doesn't do what it used to do to me. Have you ever noticed that? There's just certain things that used to give you a little bit of energy, but my body got used to it, you know? And there's, there's a lot of things we can get used to that it used to do something for us. And I want to tell you kids something that you should never get used to. Jesus. Never get used to Jesus. Never get used to reading the Bible. Never get used to going to church because it's just a beautiful and wonderful thing. We should never just get used to Jesus. His mercies are new every morning. His grace is given to us freely every day. And he has called us into a salvation that is only obtainable through him. And so we should have this excitement. I mean, Christmas morning, right? Is that not like an exciting morning? Amen. Well, we have an opportunity to have that same excitement as we wake up to Christ Jesus. Uh, He's given us another day. Amen. Uh, There's certain things that we get used to, but we should never get used to. Amen. And we kind of take it for granted. Amen. Uh, We we do. And so I'd like to tell you kids a homework assignment. You know, go to somebody who you might have gotten, you know, used to. Or you might have maybe even taken for granted a little bit that they're always there. And just, just tell them some important stuff, you know. What would you tell somebody that, that you felt very, uh, like they were very important to you? What are some things that you definitely want to say to them? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> oh, what, what are some words you definitely wouldn't want to say to somebody that means something to you? Speechless. <laughs> well, you formulate those words, okay? You know, there's two sentences, though, I think would go a long way. All right? Well, maybe three. One is thank you. Amen? Another is I love you. And there's this third one's a big one. And some of you men, if you say it when you get home, you'll make a lot of things right. I'm sorry. <laughs> Amen? Amen? And there's uh, very important things to say. Amen. Well, I love you kids. I hope you have a beautiful rest of the day. And I hope you get that hour back that you lost of sleep. Amen. Uh, Would you pray with me? Uh, Lord Jesus, thank you so much. We love you, Lord Jesus. And uh, forgive us for when we fail you, Lord. We thank you that your mercy is new every day. 
And God, be with us as we continue our worship service, Lord, that we would not just lift up our hands to you, but Lord, that we would give you our hearts. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, kids. Let's please stand up all for him. Would you please bless these tithes and offerings at this time?
Amen. If you would, please take your Bibles and turn to the Gospel of Mark. Mark chapter 9. The Gospel of Mark chapter 9. And we are going to begin at verse 14. Mark chapter 9, starting at verse 14. Mark chapter 9, start at verse 14, and we're going to read to verse 29 this morning. Mark chapter 9, start at verse 14 to 29, and when you get there, say, okay. All right, most of y'all are there. The Gospel of Mark chapter 9, start at verse 14. Last week we experienced Jesus on top of the mountain, and now we're going to see Jesus at the bottom of the mountain with the disciples. Mark chapter 9, verse 14, and this is what took place in the life and times of Jesus and the apostles. And when he came to the disciples, he saw a great multitude around them, scribes disputing with them. Immediately when they saw him, all the people were greatly amazed and running to him greeted him. And he asked the scribes, What are you discussing with them? Then one of the crowd answered and said, Teacher, I brought you my son, who has a mute spirit, and whenever it seizes him, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. He answered and said to them, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. Then they brought him to him, and when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. So he asked his father, How long has this been happening to him? And he said, From childhood. And often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, Deaf and dumb spirit, come, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly, and came out of him. And he became as one dead, so that many said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast it out? So he said to them, This kind can only come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, as we turn to you, as we read your word, and as we pray to you in this moment, Father, we ask that your Holy Spirit would command every other spirit that is not of the Holy Spirit to flee right in this moment. God, that we could be in the fullness of your measure and your power and your countenance. God, that the joy in which you offer to all your children would would shine so radiantly and brightly in this moment as we commune together with the Word of God and the Spirit of God so actively moving among us, God, that we would pull down every stronghold that we can't see. Lord, the, the, the Spirit, the principalities of the air, Lord, in whom we can't see, Father, you do. And so, Lord, we ask that you would shield us with your light and love, God, that we might get the healing that you promise us. Lord, that we would get the peace, Lord, that surpasses all understanding. Father, that you would get into our hearts and minds this morning through your word, and Lord, that you would rearrange some things in us, Lord, that no one would leave here unchanged. And God, as we are facing a brand new day, a brand new season coming up, Father, let us do everything by prayer and supplication to you. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This is uh, quite an amazing passage of Scripture. There's so many things happening right here in this moment, in this passage, 
with Jesus and the apostles and the religious leaders and scribes and all the crowd that's there, the father that was there with his son. So much is taking place in this one moment. I want you to consider there are so many things taking place right here in this moment. Like every one of us, we came in with different things in our hearts and minds. There are struggles and wars and battles that are right here in this room that the only people who know about it is the ones who brought it in and the God who is calling you and who offers you the strength of His hand and the passion of His heart and true healing that can only come from Him. And sometimes I marvel at what is truly around a dinner table at times or in, inside of a home. But I wish to tell you that God knows. He knows your struggle. He sees you. And you're here in this moment. Anyone who's here, right here in this moment, or even if you're listening somewhere else, this is not by accident. God, He led you in this moment so you could hear something specific. And it's, it's quite amazing how God can put some people together in this moment. Because in this scripture, a lot of things are happening. A lot of themes we see in this one moment. We see uh, confusion. We see conflict. We see struggle. We see sickness. We see uh, spiritual warfare here. We see a father's love. We see a savior's compassion. We see healing take place. We see a deep struggle happening right here in this passage of scripture. And I, I just want to tell you that whatever struggle you have, it's not more than God. Whatever defeats that you came here with, God's not done. Whatever hurt that you don't think you can heal from, well, please meet my Savior. He is the great healer and restorer. And I have some people here, and I have seen God do miracles, spiritual and physical. He is able. Amen. He is able. I look at this passage and I consider that, as my brother read earlier, that there are things that we can't see that we're at war with. Conflicts, contenders, and pretenders in our life. And let me just tell you, it's not all flesh and blood that we wage war against. And, but oftentimes we wage war with the wrong weapons. Amen? How many of you, when you came to Christ and Jesus got in your life and you realize now that you face conflict, you can't face it like you used to face it? I know some of you guys, some Macedonians, you remember how you used to face conflict, you know, with these, right? Or you used to say this, I'm going to get you back, right? When God gets in your, involved, you can't handle your conflict like you used to handle it. I mean, some of y'all were really vicious with this thing. And then some of y'all after Christ are still vicious with this thing. Amen? A restless evil this tongue is. Oh Lord, who can subdue it? Only through Christ Jesus can he really change what comes out of here. Because he really wants to change what's going on in here and here. The biggest battle you'll ever face is between this area. Right here. And God wants you to have the victory because he's already won. Did you hear me? Christ Jesus wishes you to experience victory in your life, peace in your life, real joy in your life, because He's already won the battle and the war. We get to be participants in what He has won for us. Uh, and so when we talk about things like this, I think oftentimes we don't uh, really pay attention to the unseen battles because they're not seen. And you might be sitting there right now as I talk about spiritual warfare, and you might say, Pastor Chris, I don't want to be in a war. I don't want to be in a spiritual war. Too late. <laughs> Sorry. If, you have a, if you're alive and you have a soul, you're in it. Because you're more than flesh and blood. You are a heart, mind, and a soul. You're way more than that. And there's some people who are wandering around life, letting life lead, live them, because they think that they're just flesh and blood. But I have news for you. You're something way more than you have ever could have guessed that you are because you're here by purpose and design. God gave you life. You are here for a reason that sometimes we can't comprehend. But I, I love, have you ever noticed that some people are just like, I don't want to say, you know, old, but a little older. Amen. Some of you don't have to say anything. Maybe some of you feel like you've gotten to that point. Amen. It's like, yes, uh, pastor, I am distinguished. Right? Time has dis distinguished me, amen? 
But if you, if you take some time to sit with anybody who has walked with the Lord for a long time, you'll be surprised at what they've been through, what God has gotten them through, things that you could not get through by yourself. You'll be very surprised. And when we consider this passage, we have this thing called evil spirit. You know, throughout scriptures, we can't escape this. They're, they're, they're in the scriptures. In the Old Testament, ask Job. He faced a spiritual battle, didn't he? And there's angels in the Old Testament. There's angels in the New Testament. And we have an understanding that it says in Revelation chapter 12. I, I mean, listen to this. This is very, I, I feel, very plain, but extraordinarily plain. It says, and a war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back. But they were defeated, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. The great dragon was thrown down, the ancient serpent, who is called the devil, and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. And I'm sure some of y'all might be thinking this, Lord, why'd you throw him here? <laughs> it's like, don't we got enough problems here? Amen. Why'd you throw him here, right? Uh, but... There was a clearly a, a battle that took place. And the greatest advantage that we give evil and dark forces is to not believe they're there. Everything we do in the flesh has spiritual connotations. It does. You're either feeding the light or the dark in your life. You're either giving ground to the Lord or you're giving ground to the dark. There, there's, there's, only two, there's only two paths. There's no middle road. I know some of us want to think that the Lord has a secret service. No, He doesn't. <laughs> it, it, you're His or you're not. You have a spirit in you or you don't. Because where the spirit is, there is freedom, there is life, and there is truth. Do you have Him? Does He have you? Because we live in a very dark world. I don't have to debate whether or not evil exists. Amen? I mean, just look around. You don't have to uh, look very far to find evil. I think I would be harder pressed to say that there is good in the world. Amen? And there is. And it comes from God. He is the good. Do you have Him? As you yourself uh, tackle conflict, as you yourself have a struggle and battles, I wish to just present a, a father and a son who had their own. And you might be very surprised how much you have in common with someone that you will never meet in this time. But I guarantee you, I, I believe that we might actually meet this father and son one day. Amen. Very interesting. But let's look at this conflict and the rebuke that Jesus gave these apostles. Look at verses 14 through 19 with me again. And when he came to the disciples... He saw a great multitude around them, and they were disputing. Immediately they saw him, and all the people were, were amazed. Jesus has returned, and they ran to him, greeted him, and he asked them, What are you discussing? Now listen, when, I want to let you all know, whenever Jesus asks a question, it's not because he doesn't know. He asks questions for everyone around him. He's asking questions for us who would read it later. He asked them, well, why, what are you all discussing? What are you arguing about? And one of the people in the crowd said, Teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit, and whenever it seizes him, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth. He gnashes his teeth and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your who? I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not what? They couldn't do it. Amen. And then Jesus says one of the most harshest things here. He says, Oh, you faithless or you unbelieving generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. I, I want to stop there. This is harsh. Jesus basically looked at his disciples like, Man, uh, how much longer will I have to be around you people? That's very hurtful. Some of you have heard that from your significant other. You know? <laughs> right? I mean, you, you might have uh, said that to uh, some, one of your children. It's like, How much longer must I have you in this car? Amen. Uh, we'll have these moments where we get, it feels like we're, we're reaching an end here. Jesus says something so incredibly harsh to his disciples, but you have to understand context here. 
And I also want you to understand that not everybody who has a sickness or maybe a bad attitude has a spirit. I don't want you to think that anybody, because everybody in the Bible who was sick didn't have a spirit or possessed or anything. I don't want you to go around and it's like, well, so-and-so is real mean. They must got a demon, you know? Uh, or it's like, I bet so-and-so's got a spirit. You know, I, we, we should not be doing that. Because number one, you, you don't know. You don't know the wars that they're waging. You don't know the wars that are around you. You, you don't know. That's why we have to be prayed up. You don't know what someone's going through, so you pray for them. And you don't know what's going to come after you, and so you just need to be praying for you and for your family and for those around you. We need to be in constant prayer with God. And, and as they're uh, having an argument, some scholars believe that they might have been arguing over how they did it wrong. Because some of y'all might not know this, but there were actually Jewish exorcists. Did y'all know that? There was an itinerant Jewish spiritualist who would actually practice uh, chasing uh, the spirits away, the evil spirits away. Because the Pharisees believed in angels and demons, eternal life, the resurrection. The Pharisees believed in all those things that we actually believe in as Christians. The Sadducees believed in none of it. And which is absolutely just uh, so sad because they kept the law, but they had no wonder faith in the wonders of God. They kept it because it was, well, that's just what we do. And, and you know what? We could really fall into that too. Well, I go to church because that's just what I do. Or read my Bible because that's just what I do. Well, I pray every day and every night because that's just what I do. But why do you do these things? Who are you praying to? Who are you reaching out to? Jesus, he gave these disciples authority to do these things. It says in Luke chapter 9, Luke 9 and Mark 9 are very similar. It says in Luke 9 verses 1 and 2, Jesus empowered them to go and heal diseases and cast out evil spirits. He gave them that authority. And in the same chapter, they have this failure. And can you maybe see why Jesus is a little frustrated? Because Jesus actually gave them the authority to do that. And they went out and they did those things. And then they came to this moment where Jesus was not with them. He was up on a mountain communing with God. With Elijah and Moses up there. Peter, James, and John was up there. And here they are having all this confusion. And I wonder if they had already done that so many times. That they went through a town and they saw someone sick and they healed him. And then they saw someone who was possessed. They healed him. That when they saw this little kid, I wonder one of like Philip or one of them was like, I got this. Oh, no, I, I got this. And, and they did whatever they had been doing. They're like, you're healed and nothing happened. Could you imagine like the fear? And maybe another one of them is like, Thomas is like, Philip, move out of the way. I got this. Amen. How many, by the way, how many of you have ever said, I've got this? But you did not got this. Amen. And, and so I, I wonder, because of human nature, what if they had already began to make it just, what, Routine. Christianity is not about routine. It's about relationship. And you can be caught up in a routine when he's calling you into a real relationship with him. They were just doing something because they were told to do it. I often wonder, were they doing something because they were called to do it? What are you called to? How is God speaking to you? Jesus spoke to them in this moment, and it wasn't quite nice. Because Jesus gave them the authority to do this, and how quickly they'd already dropped the ball. Sometimes we'll lose the wonder because we get caught up in the work. Have you lost the wonder of Jesus? Have you lost the wonder of just coming and worshiping with Jesus? Have you lost the wonder of just singing to Him? Have you lost the wonder? But then we see this struggle that is very clearly here. Look at verse 20. Then they brought him to him, and, and when he saw Jesus, immediately the spirit convulsed him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. And he asked the Father, now he asked a question, not because Jesus doesn't know. He's asking for all of us, how long has this been happening to him? And how long, Christians, from childhood? And often has thrown him both into where? The fire and where? 
the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And then Jesus said, well, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. And the father cries out with tears, Lord, I believe, but what? Help my unbelief. Here's Jesus. He asks him a question. How long has this been going on? He gives us a glimpse of this father's life with this child. For the first many years of this young child's life, he kind of gives us a glimpse. This kid's still alive because his dad loved him. This kid's still here on this earth because his father constantly kept an eye on him. His family constantly had to watch him, especially when they were around what? Fire or water, which are two very essential things for life. Amen? They, they didn't have electricity back then. They didn't, they didn't have things, the commodities we have. Essentially, water and fire was life to them. And so whenever they were around a thing that would help them live, he wanted the, the spirit would take over and try to drown him or burn him. And so constantly this dad had to be watching him. Could you imagine how tiring that could get out after a while? Oh, we're going near the lake. Watch, uh, and watch you know, Amen. Wouldn't it be incredibly t uh, challenging and tiring? How many sleepless nights did some of the family had because they had to watch this kid so he wouldn't get up during the night through the Spirit and do something that would harm him? Could you imagine some people in his life like, why don't you just get rid of that kid? Hey, that still happens today, doesn't it? There are struggles that people have told you, why are you even fighting that? Why are you even trying? I'm so thankful that there are people who fight. I'm, still glad, I'm so glad there are some people who will still go in the fire and the water after somebody. I'm so glad I have a Savior who did that for me. He was still willing to go in the fire and the water after me. And praise God for those who don't give up on us so quickly. Because there's some of you who are actually in the midst of a struggle whether it's a relationship, a marriage, raising kids, you have debt, you have a job, you have a calling, but you're struggling with it because everything inside of you is telling to let go, but there's a voice saying, hold on a little longer. And I wish I could tell you what to do. Don't you wish that someone, I just wish someone would tell me what to do. Well, listen, you can't hit the easy button on everything. Part of it's the journey. Part of it is that struggle, learning what's worth it and what's not. Learning what God's trying to create in you to be. I was counseling with a, a, a young man, and he was having problems with his family. And I, I said, well, is there any way I can help? And, and he said, pastor, sometimes a family doesn't need a pastor. They just need a mom and a dad. Sometimes a family just doesn't need a better church or a better pastor. They just need God in the house. Amen. I'm so thankful that I have a Savior who puts inside of us a love that at times we will go in the fire and the water after those that the world's trying to crush and destroy. And some of you have been a benefactor of that love. There's some people who just loved you and loved you and loved you and loved you until Christ won in your life. Amen? Praise God for those who don't give up easy. Amen? This father fought hard for his son. And then Jesus said, if you believe, all things can happen. And this father is every believer right here. How many of you, you believe, but you struggle with unbelief? I mean, amen, like all of us in this moment, well, Lord, I believe, but, but help me. I, I want to believe better. I want to have faith more. I, I want to really depend upon you. I, I wish to believe as you've called me to believe. But Christians, that's the struggle of faith. It's the battle that you are facing right now. And it, it certainly makes it real. Anything worth fighting for and that's hard to fight for is worth it. There are a lot of things that are easy out there, but they're not worth fighting for. The road to destruction is how big? Wide. But salvation is narrow and sometimes filled with 
obstacles. Amen? But I want to let you know that when you go through your waters and rivers, when this world tries to crush you, I wish to tell you that God is with you. For thus says the Lord, who formed you, who created you, I have redeemed you, you are mine. When you go through waters and rivers and fires, I will be with you. That is our God. Jesus lets this man know that all things are possible for those who believe. And he cries out to the one who is able to do all things. Look at these next few verses. Look at 25. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, they were just coming to see the miracle. He rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, Deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried, convulsed him greatly, and came out of him. And he became as one what? It was like he was dead. Could you imagine everyone seeing this and Jesus getting the, whatever thing was in him, this evil spirit, and it leaves. And the struggle was so bad, they thought the kid died. Let me tell you this. Before it gets better, it always gets worse. When the hero shows up, the villain fights harder. Because the villain's always trying to hold on to what's not his. Amen? There are certain things that the enemy has his hands on, but it was never his. And some of it is a belief problem in our hearts and minds. But God, he looks to us for intimacy. He heals this child, and it's as if the, the struggle was so severe, it almost died. How many of you, when God won a fight, it was just like, I'm dying here. Amen? It was so bad, the, the, the hurt was so incredibly trying, that it's just like as if you feel like you are dying. You know what got me through? Prayer. I'm not speaking as somebody who just read about it. I have experienced things in life where the only thing that got me through was prayer and the others praying for me. And there are things that you will face, struggles, battles, spirits, principalities of the air that you can't see that are coming at you from all directions. Christians, my God can lead you through it. He will give you a strength you don't have. And all you have to do, as Jesus said to the apostles in Luke, they said, why couldn't we do this, Jesus? He says, you just have to have faith the size of a mustard seed. You know how small that thing is? Listen, it gets stuck in your teeth. It's that small. It's little. It's tiny. You just have to have faith the size of a mustard seed. And you can say to that mountain, move over there. Do you know how impossible that is? Only with God. Because some of you have mountains. It's called unforgiveness. Some of you have mountains. It's called bitterness. Some of you have mountains and it's deep, deep hurt that you don't think that could ever be healed. Listen, you just have to have faith the size of what? A mustard seed. That's the important part of the word. You can have a mustard, but it's not great. It needs to be a seed, right? Because a seed can do what? Grow. And just as our faith needs to grow, and you can't have a seed grow unless it has the right environment. Amen? Right? Prayer is the greatest food for your faith. That's why Jesus looked at the apostles and said, you can't do this. These can only happen through prayer. And some ancient manuscripts add fasting. Prayer and fasting. It's about intimacy. I want to tell you the hand that has carried you all of your life. The one who's led you through the battles and the struggles. His name is Jesus. And he loves you. But have you placed yourself in a position to grow in your faith. Amen. Some of us, we, we pray at different times. Some of us, we really pray when we're on the highway. Amen. We're praying because we left the house late and some by, somehow we are going to make it there on time because of the power of prayer. How many of you made it there on time? Mm, right? Some of us pray when we're just going through really rough times and we just need that strength and he supplies it. Amen. 
I just want you to consider what could God do in your life if every morning you woke up and said, hello, Jesus. Amen. Would you please stand as we go to the Lord in prayer? Heavenly Father, as we approach you during this time of invitation, Lord, as we pray to you, Lord, I know you're speaking, and so, Lord, let our hearts be quick to listen and to hear. God, if anyone approaches you with just a mustard seed this morning, might you help them move that mountain. And we ask all, this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all so much for coming out to worship Jesus this morning. Amen. Uh, please come back tonight at 7, and we will do it all over again. Amen. I love you all so much. Uh, Brother Wayne Murphy, would you please dismiss us as we pray?